Hi everybody, I'm Sarah Cray. I teach watercolor and today we are doing the Robin tutorial. Oh. Oh. We have Keenan here working on this project. Hello. And uh, this is a little bit of a, of a tricky tutorial, but um, just giving you a fair warning, it's fun. Totally fun. We're gonna have a great time and uh, we're gonna do this project in six steps. Nice. So our very first step is we're going to do our blue background with a light pink wash. And we're gonna do that at the same time. That's step one. Step two, we're gonna paint the orange section on our bird. Step three, we are going to add brown on our bird. Step four, we are going to do the medium and dark values and kind of create more form on the bird, along with painting the beak and the feet. Um, step number five is we will be doing our branch and our flowers. And then our last step is our eyeball and any details. Now I'm gonna give you fair warning. When animals don't have eyes, they look super creepy. Uh, so your bird is gonna look a little bit creepy until the very last step. I'm just gonna call that out now, okay? Good, good. Giving you guys fair warning. It is what it is. And we are using four colors. Our first color is tiger orange. Our second color is fuchsia. Our third color is uh, space blue. And our last color is yellow ochre. Okay. I'm using three paint brushes here, around two, around six, and around 12. Uh, two and the six are my go-to brushes, but I like to pull out the round 12 and sometimes a wash brush. Uh, and this is what a wash brush looks like. It's like a square tip. Every now and again, just to show you guys how to use it, they're much easier when you're painting large areas. Um, I've already transferred my outline onto my paper. If you need help on how to do that, there are directions in your welcome note in your box. And we're gonna start with our oath. Yes. Okay? Okay. If you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. Okay, so our very first step is we're going to do a blue wash that kind of starts, you see how it's like a darker value blue and then it fades to a light value and then we have soft pink. You see that? Yes, it's very nice. So that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna use our round 12. And I just wanna call out, I don't know if you can see it on the screen. When I was setting up, I accidentally dropped a little bit of orange on my paper. I lifted it up, but I just wanna call attention to it that I got some yellow right here. Hmm. I'm still gonna keep going. It's not gonna stop me. Yeah. Good. But like if I get a little bit of a green right there, that's what's going on. Got it. Okay. So I have my 12. I'm gonna grab some space blue and move it to the center of my palette. And then I'm gonna add water because I want it to be uh, more of a medium value instead of a dark value here. Medium to light is what we're going with. Now I wanna work pretty quickly because it's important for the paper to be wet when I drop in my pink so it kind of diffuses out. Um, and I want the wash to be pretty even and both of those things work better when you work quickly, okay? Okay. So I got my round 12, I got my blue, and I'm just going to get my brush nice and wet and go for it. Start with blue at the top. I'm doing big, bold strokes, just really wetting the area, pulling the color down that I've already laid down and working the area back and forth over and over again. Um, try and avoid the bird. You might overlap a little bit, that's not a big deal. So at this point, I'm kind of just using water because I'm just trying to, to work quickly here and get my paper nice and wet. And I'm doing a horizontal hold with my brush. That means I'm using the side of my brush. Then I'm gonna grab some more blue, drop it in the top and then work it down. And I'm just keep, I'm gonna keep working it back and forth to kind of smooth out the lines that I'm getting, okay? but it's a barely there color. You might barely only be able to see it on my screen. Okay, and then when I get down to the bottom part and the side here, I'm gonna grab a little bit of my fuchsia, add some water to it so it's a light pink, and you're just gonna drop 
in. So I'm using the tip of my brush here to drop in this pink. And it should just kind of smooth, like diffuse out. We don't want these marks to be sharp. And I'm kind of like sliding my brush and dipping it because I want variation in my brush marks. So you see how they just kind of softly blend out. And what we're doing here is we're basically creating the far away blossoms on our, you know how when things are in focus and close up they're sharp and things that are far away are out of focus. We're kind of doing the out of focus flowers right now. So it really makes a, an image or something look really good. Yeah, it, it kind of creates depth. Depth separates your foreground from your background. Yep. Just exactly. looks crispy. Exactly. Okay. That's step one. <clears throat> Bam. Boom. Uh, now I'm going to dry this. Um, I'm using a craft Heat it craft tool. Heat it. Can you use a blow dryer? Yeah. Heat but, it. There's but the thing song. about blow dryers is they're going to move things because that, that thing has force. It does. Because, I mean, you put that on your hair, it's blowing your hair. You right. put this on your hair, it's barely blowing. It you just know? feels nice. It just feels warm. You know what? I'm going to put this on my toes. <laughs> <laughs> my feet are so cold. My fingers are cold. It's really it back here. It shouldn't be this cold it's back here. It's so cold back here. Move with the heat it. Move with Be the one heat. with the heat it craft tool. There we go. I'm kind of taking the energy of this heat yes. tool and putting it in me because I am so Photo, cold. Photosynthesis is what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> I think the technical term is photosynthesis. It is. <laughs> Okay, so if you're looking at this, you're probably just like, is there even blue on your paper? There is, but it's a soft blue. It's a barely there color. That's and nice. that was on purpose. And the reason why I did that is because I knew that I had to avoid my bird. And it's really hard to do a dark or a medium value background and like outline it with getting a smooth wash so, but if you do a light value, then you can't totally tell that I've avoided the bird and it's a smoother transition. Does that make sense? Yep. And then that way, if I did overlap accidentally on my bird, it won't affect really the color of it. Where if you're using a medium or a dark value wash, if you accidentally paint over sections of your bird, you will be able to tell. So I'm giving you that information. So then as you're adding backgrounds to your paintings, you can figure out, do I want this to be a medium and dark, and then what do I gotta look for if I am, you know, and I'm trying to avoid a section. So that's my thought process. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to do the chest of our robin. So if you look at our reference photo here, we start out like tiger orange, and then as we move down, um, I'm gonna add a little bit of fuchsia to it to give it um, a little bit of like warmth and like redness to it to kind of change the value by the color. What kind of bird is this? This is a robin and actually it's a European robin. Really? And do you know the difference? Not at all. Okay, so an American robin, you guys, I just want to call attention to the fact that I looked this up so I can share this with you. I see. I'm growing as a teacher, okay? <laughs> I'm doing better. So, <laughs> so, two doors. so an American robin, the orange part goes all the way down its belly, like around its belly, where a European robin, the orange part only goes halfway down its chest. Whoa. Okay? And Interesting. And I feel like European robins are just kind of rounder. I feel like American ones are a little bit longer. Um, anyways, huh. I Googled it, and that's what Google said. So if I'm wrong... Blame Google. Blame Google. Thanks, Google. Thanks, Google. Okay. I'm adding water to my tiger orange because that makes it like a really beautiful yellow. And I'm gonna grab this color, and I just realized I missed a line on my beak. I'm gonna put that in now. Mm, good eye, Brian. Okay. Put a little bit of this yellow in using my six, and then I'm gonna grab water, kind of just like wet the area, avoiding the eye here. 
Okay. And then I'm gonna take some more of that orange and right underneath the beak, I'm gonna put more of that orange in. And you can decide like, if you like that kind of like lemon yellow color and you wanna keep that in some places, you can. I'm just gonna kind of even out this wash for me though, cause I really like the warmth of this and I wanna make sure that it stays orange. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab a little bit of my fuchsia and along the base here when it's wet, I like to drop this in and it's gonna kind of move. So after I drop it in, I wipe my brush off and then kind of like blend the area where the yellow and the orange meet. So it's a smooth transition. Maybe I'm gonna get a little bit, I'm gonna switch my two. And like right underneath the beak, I'm gonna, it's gonna get a little bit more warm because that beak is kind of casting a shadow. Mm. And then I love to go with the smaller brush like my two and go along the edge. And even though I had like an outline, just kind of like letting some thin lines in. You see how I'm adding? Just past your outline? Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of like playing with that line. And if you want to do one more hit of fuchsia right here at this line, kind of where the orange is going to meet the brown, is where we're going to see some. Some of that color change Man, a little bit more. That looks cool. I love this color so much. I feel like the orange goes a little bit behind the eyes, just a little though. Okay. And we might like our painting kind of changes as it dries. So it's possible we might come back in and make some adjustments. But for now, that feels pretty, pretty good. Sweet. Okay, so we are going to move on to step three, which is where we're gonna insert brown into our bird. So you can use just yellow ochre, like yellow ochre is kind of a brown color, but it has like a strong green undertone. Um, so if you don't wanna use just yellow ochre by itself, you can grab a little bit of fuchsia and mix that into it and that will tone down the greenness. And just kind of turn it into like a really light brown, kind of almost a gold color. And I'm going to um, start with this, that light brown on the belly of my brush. And I always like to put color down and then kind of just like use water to spread that color out. Now remember, wherever you touch that orange, it's gonna bleed a little bit. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, just giving you a heads up. And I'm gonna mix a different brown um, so I'm going to grab a little bit of my space blue and let's grab some fuchsia and tiger orange. See what color I get. There we go. That's a good brown. See that brown? Yeah, it looks good. It looks good. It looks good. <laughs> Thanks, Keenan. You're welcome. So I'm going to take this brown. And kind of you see this line right here in the middle of my wing. I'm going to follow that line. And do that same thing, kind of just pull that color up. So we're working in light to medium values here because we're essentially just kind of laying down the color of our bird. And then when I get to my wing, I'm gonna take that same brown 
and I'm gonna do the same thing. Go along the edge, and you'll see it's an uneven edge because it's layers of wings on top of each other. And then just kind of spread it to meet this section. And I'm using my six for all of this. Okay. And then let's do our tail feathers, same thing, kind of more medium to light values. If you want to switch to your two, because these are pretty thin lines, feel free to. And then right here on this belly, this bird is three-dimensional, right? It's turning away. And so when you have like a round three-dimensional object like this, or animal, and it's going underneath, um, the underneath part of the belly is gonna be shadowed because that body is kind of going under. So I'm just gonna take this brown that I was using on the top and just kind of introduce it to the bottom just to start to give my bird a little bit of dimensionality. <laughs> what? He just looks so plump and happy. So cute. <laughs> yeah. I know, isn't this the cutest little bird? <laughs> yes. Okay. So that was step three. Huh. Now we're gonna move on to step four and now we're gonna go in and add medium and dark values to our brown and really start to um, have our bird emerge. That's the word I like to use. So I'm gonna mix a darker brown and I'm gonna do the same thing. Space blue, fuchsia, <coughs> and tiger orange. Okay, so now I got a lot of this dark brown. And it's still reading maybe a little bit more green than I would like. So I'm gonna grab some fuchsia and mix that in there and see what that does. Ooh, that feels pretty good. I like that brown. And remember, you still have your yellow ochre that you can use as well. And the yellow ochre is nice because it naturally is kind of more of a lighter value. Okay, so if I look at my bird in my reference here, you can also look at your outline. I try and do hash marks where there's gonna be darker values. So kind of where these layers of wing meet this section, there's a darker value right underneath the wing because these wings are, is casting a shadow on the body, underneath the belly right here, and behind the eyes. Now, I just wanna be a little bit, um, I want you to be aware of the shadows around the eyes because it can make your bird look tired. So, so just lend a gentle hand around the eye. The other areas you can be a little bit more liberal with, but around the eye, just do small layers by layers because it's really easy to make your bird look like it's got really big bags under its like eyes. A 40 hour work week. Yeah, <laughs> maybe you're painting how you feel or something, you know, that <laughs> yeah. happens too. Okay, so I'm gonna just, again, take my dark brown and go along this edge where it's a darker value and then rinse my brush and kind of blend and transition that color. See how I keep picking up more water? Yeah. Rinse, dab it on your paper towel and then blend. And that way you can get a nice kind of value shift or transition and not get lost. And sometimes when it's wet, like this, like I just did that value shift, I'll go along and just kind of drop in color and just let it bleed out. Okay. I'm kind of working the areas too where it, turn, where it kind of meets that orange. So I'm just taking like a damp brush kind of like working that area back and forth. But then when I did that, do you see how it created this hard line? Mm -hmm. I don't like that. So I'm gonna take a clean brush with only water and blend that line out and kind of lift. Very nice. Okay. 
Now when we get to the top here, I'm going to switch to my two because kind of like right at this where the orange meets the brown, it's a little bit darker and then right behind the eye. But remember, do small value shifts. Don't go in there with like an almost black brown because that would be really strong. Okay, and let's do our beak. I'm just grabbing brown using my two and I'm gonna start with doing a light value on the top. Actually, I'm just gonna do a light value on the entire beak and I'll go back in and I'll darken the bottom one after it's dry. It's much easier to do it that way than to try and keep the top half light and the bottom part dark. So I'm just gonna do it all light right now. Okay, now I'm gonna go and kind of address the belly. So what I'm gonna do is I have this kind of that yellow ochre color and the brown color, and I kind of wanna like blend these areas together. So I just took a damp brush, and I'm just kind of working the spaces back and forth. And then when it's wet like this, I'm gonna grab some more of that brown and introduce that to the bottom. And I'm just kind of doing brush strokes here and I'm letting them kind of like diffuse out because it, it is layers of feathers and so there are some little like shadows and things like that here. So it's not gonna be a perfectly smooth even wash. There's gonna be some slight value shifts within there. So that's why I'm kind of letting this kind of blend out. Now right underneath this wing is where there's gonna be a nice dark shadow. So you wanna make sure that you have a dark value here. And so right kind of where this is meeting, I'm gonna to switch to my two. Now that brown is definitely purple which is okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna pick up more brown and just paint over it. Kind of let that blend, bleed out. Blend that shadow out. With a damp brush. A damp brush in watercolor is just like your best friend. Lifesaver. Totally. Okay, I feel good about that. I'm gonna let that go for a second. Now I'm gonna move on to the feet. Now, um, if you guys painted animals with me before, I don't spend a lot of time on feet because I'm just like, we just gotta put them there. And then like the viewer's brain does the hard work of being like, oh yeah, the, those are feet, okay, cool. And then like moves on. I don't, I don't need to like define every single aspect of this. Because for me, I'm just like, yeah, it's, they can still tell it's a bird. Maybe I just don't find painting feet very interesting. Well, it's because feet are weird. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so I just, I'm, I'm of the mind of, let's just give the viewers enough information where they can uh, tell what's going on. And then let's move on to areas that are a little bit more fun to paint. Yeah. Not everybody paints like that. And that's okay. And that's, there's no judgment in that. That's just how I like to approach things. And if that bothers you, that's okay too. You can totally flush out every single like value shift across every round part of that foot. I'm just not gonna do that, you know? Like, I'm tired. I do, I do now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think that's why I love painting animals so much because like, I love that you have an opportunity to explore with color and form and shape, but our animals are um, a thing that our brain is so familiar with that like we can skip a lot of details and the brain will fill in those details for us. So like, especially if you're doing like really common 
like animals that have really obvious shapes or colors like flamingos and stuff like that. If you paint something pink, long and skinny with a little pink, I guarantee you somebody's gonna be like, that's a flamingo. You don't even have to have like a full correct body. People are like, that's a flamingo because they're so, their characteristics are so obvious. And I like that about animals. I like that I don't have to spend a lot of time on the feet of this bird with, and you can still pick up that it's a bird, you know? Yes, I do. And that's just kind of my style. That's how I like to paint. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with my two is you see these thin lines that I had on my outline? Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna follow those lines using my two. And what I'm doing here is I'm painting on the point, so I'm doing a more vertical hold. And I'm just like pulling with my arm and I, I don't want you to follow my outline exactly. It's super hard to trace a thin line and have that line stay thin and not shaky. So instead, I'm reminding you, there are a lot of little lines here, so just do a lot of little thin lines. So I'm just gonna kind of like, boop, boop, try and keep them straight. If they go a little bit wonky overlap, it's not the end of the world. Pick up some more. It's okay if some areas are a little bit darker than others. They're gonna kind of all meet right here. Okay? There's our layers of wings. And if it feels too like what I like to do sometimes like this at this point is I'll go in and I'll just kind of blend some areas. Kind of like what I did with the shadow here. Like this wing line is casting a shadow here. Just kind of blend it out. Just kind of mess it up. Mm, that feels more real to me. Yeah, I like that. And then I like to kind of go along the edge to do some thin lines. There we go. Ooh, that feels good. Okay, and then this, these, the underneath one is darker and the top one stays light. Like that. Boop, 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 boop. It kind of like comes separate out from the wing. It's a little bit uh, funky. Just kind of blend. I had some white spots, so I'm kind of just putting a little bit of color in there. Okay? That looks cool. Just little hints, little hints. And let's do the bottom of the beak. So I'm gonna get a nice dark brown. I want this to be dark. And if it's dry, go ahead and paint the bottom part of that beak. Using your two. If you have a smaller brush, they make a lot smaller brushes. Feel free to use a smaller brush. Okay. Okay, that feels pretty good. Looks great. Our bird's looking good. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead. I like to leave a little white edge around my eyeball just to make it like give myself some safety room. Um, I'm gonna go in and kind of thin that line out. put in a little bit of that extra value underneath. Okay, we're gonna leave that alone for a second. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna go and do our branch and our flowers, okay? So, I'm moving to my six. And I'm gonna get some fresh, unmixed fuchsia on my palette. Mm. Now, cherry blossoms have five petals. And when you think about cherry blossoms, um, I want you to think about how they grow on the branch, right? So they kind of come off these branches. And you have some where you will be able to see them straight on. And then you have some where you'll only see the side. 
You see what I'm saying? Yes. Like maybe, and then maybe some are covered by others. So like as you're painting this, what I want to help you avoid is just painting all of them flat straight on because that's not how they grow. See how that feels like it's a little bit more connected to the branch than that? Yes. Okay. So I'm taking my six. And again, we're not doing super detailed here, um, but I love, I think cherry blossoms are beautiful. And so, and they're such a gorgeous color that I thought it'd be fun to have our robin on our cherry blossom tree. So I'm taking this fuchsia and I'm just gonna start by petals. One, two, three, four, five. And you can do different like pinks. Here's one, two, maybe this one's at its side. And you can do them in different values as well. Now I'm not doing too much of crazy value, like dark values here because I do wanna paint the, the stamens, which are the little things kind of poking out of the center. And I want those to pop out. So um, I'm gonna make sure the stamens are a super, super dark value. So my other like flowers, are gonna be more like a medium value. And do you see how like, this flower is wonky, okay? Yeah. That's okay. Fine. It doesn't matter. Like some of these flowers are gonna look wonky cause they're kind of like overlap or coming out of um, like underneath. You know what I'm saying? I bought some flowers recently that were crushed until a couple days later. <laughs> Maybe you got crushed flowers. Got some crushed flowers. What kind of animal eats cherry blossoms? Birds? Probably European robins. <laughs> this one's just having a snack. Yeah, he's just like, oh, this looks like a cherry blossom. I'm gonna I eat this. I want to eat this. How can you look at that pink and tell me it wouldn't taste good? Like cotton candy. I actually have no idea what birds. I thought you were gonna say, I have no idea what a cherry blossom tastes like. Ooh, I don't know <clears throat> that either, do you? No, I. I'm, I'm not trying to snack on a tree <laughs> flower. I, I, I don't know how. Do you know what tree blossoms are so beautiful? Do I know? Uh, apple, apple, crab apple? No, they're, they're, oh, I wish I could remember. Cr crab apples are not attractive. My mother-in-law has a tree in her yard. I think it's like, I feel like it's a type of apple tree. Okay. Um, and I wish I could remember the kind because the blossoms that come from that tree are so beautiful. They're just gorgeous. They're just lovely. When it, she sends us pictures when it's um, in bloom and I just like want to paint every time. Okay, so now what I'm doing, so you see how some of these are pretty like chunked off and separated? I kind of want them to feel a little not so separate from my background. So I'm gonna go in with the damp brush and mess things up. Sarah, what color is your mother-in-law's tree? Like, it's like a pink. It might be a crab apple tree. I, I could be wrong about the attractiveness of a crab apple tree. Well, I mean, it's not always, it's just like when, you know how those flowers bloom first and then they turn into fruit? Yeah. It's like those flowers blooming. So it's not all the time. It's just some of the time. And it's this so one pretty. is pink and it's a crab apple, apple tree. I wonder if that's it. It might be. I wish I could remember. Okay. And I didn't have any sort of outline with the flowers because I really wanted you guys to decide how, like, how far your flowers will go. Maybe it comes more out on the top. Maybe it just kind of bends down to the bottom. It's up to you and give yourself permission to make these kinds of decisions. I know, especially when you're starting out, it's kind of scary, because you're like, well, I don't know, should my tree branch go this way? Should it go this way? Like, And I'm here to tell you that the best way to learn is just to make a decision and um, stick with it. That's uh, my advice for you is allow yourself to mess up. Yeah because we learn the most from our mistakes. And I hope to give you all the information that I have to help you guys on your journey, but I want you to branch out too. You know, I want this to be 
for you. And I want you to feel like you can create without having to have someone hold your hand the whole time. And there's nothing wrong with that, especially when you're learning. Um, but again, our lessons are stronger when we're the ones making those decisions and seeing firsthand how they come out. So give yourself permission to do that. Okay, I love my flowers. And I'm gonna do my branch. So I, the tricky thing with your branch is you just wanna make sure that it's a different color or at least value than your feet so they don't get lost. So I'm gonna go for like a more red branch here than the brown or a, a more red brown than was on my bird. And I'm just gonna to wanna to make sure these are dry. You could have painted your branch first. Really, it doesn't, it's not a big deal. And just gonna to start to put this in. To go along with what you were saying about we learn from our actions. Mm -hmm. My first military supervisor just retired recently mm -hmm. and he used to share an ancient proverb with us that says, don't start none, won't get none. That basically means if you never start, you'll never get anything out of it. Mm, I like that. Don't, okay, wait, you gotta say it for me don't, one more time. Don't start none, won't get none. Okay. So I switch to my round two when I'm doing my branches because as my branch moves, like let's pretend the trunk of my tree is over here. As my branch, branch moves away, it's gonna get thinner. So I'm switching my brush and then like, I don't have an outline going over here and that's because again, I want you guys to look and make your own decisions. Where does this tree branch go? And is it kind of like going out this way? And you don't have to have a lot of detail. It's just a little bit of lines here and there. And I like to do an extra shadow, like if I can, kind of white by the feet to kind of show like this is sitting on top of it. I had a little bit of a bleed there, but that's okay. I'm not mad about it. And I feel like this needs to kind of go this way. There. Okay. And on my um, reference, I have a branch coming out this way. But I, I actually really love the idea of this like softly fading away into nothing. So I'm not gonna add that on this one. Now feel free to, it's the same thing. I just put more flowers going this way and then a branch. But this one I'm gonna leave just like this because I, I really like what's happening here. I love this, the soft blue. Yeah, isn't it nice? Yeah. It's just a little hint. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my six. And just kind of, I notice right here that it feels bare. And I don't want it to feel bare. I mean, there's a little bit of pink there, but that value is so light, it almost seems not there. Mm. So I'm just gonna go in and kind of just put in some pink. As if it's like on the other side of the branch or something. I'm gonna be careful not to touch my branch though, because I don't want that brown kind of bleeding everywhere. Gosh, I love how these kind of bled together. That turned out really lovely. And maybe after you put your branches in, you're like, okay, I need more over here then. Feel free to do that. My marks got a little bit too small, so I'm thickening them. All right, that feels good. We're gonna let that dry. We're gonna move back into our bird. Now our bird at this point should be mostly dry so then we can kind of get an understanding of the values, if we need to make any adjustments, things like that. So I'm gonna go in with my six and I'm actually going to kind of um, redefine some of this area. Here. 
And then I'm gonna switch my two and using that same kind of dark, it's like a dark orange. You can do thin lines along the edge here. And then maybe just a couple like wisps, like gathering of the feathers underneath. Again, we're just giving our viewer enough information where we're like, yes, there is a little shadow of feathers here. Just giving them a little bit of texture detail. Not a ton though. Okay. And then I feel like underneath my beak, I lost a little bit of that value. So I'm gonna put it back in, kind of creating a shadow. There's a little bit of a shadow around the eye. Again, work in lighter values so it doesn't feel like our bird is tired. Okay, that feels good. Now I'm gonna look at the brown part. Um, I'm gonna kind of resharpen this shadow line on my body. And then take, rinse your brush and kind of let that blend out. And maybe if you're like, I feel pretty good about the shadow placement on my bird. I don't think I need to add to that. But what I am gonna do is do a little few of those like texture lines. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. Kind of just showing these are layers of feathers here. And this foot actually kind of goes into the body. And the other one comes out the other side. And your painting may not need this. I just decided to do a few extra dark lines. And again, where this brown meets the orange. A little bit more detail lines. Just kind of like, just a few. And birds always, or whenever you're painting animals, personalities come out. And it's really hard to recreate them. They kind of are what they are. So I always like to name my animals when I'm painting them, give them a little bit of a personality. So Keenan, you think of a name for this guy, okay? I'm on name duty. Yep. I'm all over it. But I have every right to veto your name suggestion. Okay. <laughs> all right. Now I'm gonna do my eye. Now the eye is tricky because it's really tiny. It's a really tiny area and we wanna leave a couple areas white for the glare. So I'm gonna try and mix a dark value that's a different dark value than what I already have here. I'm gonna take some blue. Let's take some ochre. Let's take some fuchsia. Ooh, there we go. That's a nice dark color. You see that? See how it reads more cool than yeah. brown? So that, again, was space blue, a little bit of ochre, and some fuchsia. Hmm. So I'm going to take my two. And you want, again, make sure your eye is dry because you don't want the black part bleeding out. And just carefully, I'm going to go in and paint and avoid the glare spots that I have mixed in there. Now glare spots are pretty tricky because if you leave them too big, they actually look like the whites of the eye and then your eye takes on like a whole nother shape. So I would say those glare drops are maybe a little bit too big. I'm gonna thin them out just a tad. There we go, cute. 
cute little eye. I have several names for him now. Yeah? Mm-hmm. You added that eye and I got a new one. Well, I'm not it's, sure now. It's funny because <clears throat> the eyes give a expression. The they eyes do. are really what bring something to life. So that's why you can't really fully get an understanding of who your bird is until you put those eyes in. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Now while that dries, I'm gonna do my stamens on my cherry blossom. So I'm gonna still use my round two, grab some fuchsia, and just kind of like, obviously these kind of like bled together, um, which is fine, but what I'm saying is, you get to decide where the stamens go. So maybe like here, you're like, yeah, we've got stamens coming out here, boop, boop, boop. And then maybe this is the side of one, so you just see them peeking through. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, just kind of put them here and there. Peeking through, maybe that's peeking through. Maybe this one is in the middle. The sharp lines make it just pop. Just doing a little bit of detail. And I love that. Just give them enough information where they can figure out what's going on. And maybe in another project we'll do like very detailed cherry blossoms. These are definitely loose and not super realistic, but I think we're giving our viewer enough information to know kind of what's going on. Because we want it, for me, I wanted the bird to be like the star. This is where we're combining the idea of super detailed and rigid with something a little bit more loose. Um, so the bird is our super detailed area and then the rest of it is just kind of like a compliment, but it doesn't take away from the detail of our bird. And again, not everybody paints like that and that's okay. And as you paint more, you will start to have a preference one way or the other. Or maybe you learn how to do both. But what I'm saying is like, that's totally a style preference. And um, you guys can make that decision for you as you paint more and more of being like, I actually really like loose. I actually really like detailed or actually I like a combination of both. And there's no right or wrong. That's, that I guess is what I'm saying. You can't pick wrong. It's just what you like. And maybe a little over here. I feel like I lost a little bit of shape. So let's, there we go. And to kind of cover up this bleed that I have, I'm just gonna paint a flower. And you don't have to cover it up. I mean, most of the time I don't cover up bleeds, but that's just something you can do if it's bothering you. How do we feel? Love it. Another tip that I just wanna share with you is we didn't use our, our bonus item for this box, our Rhythm and Wonder box was a black pen. We didn't use it in this project, but this would have made your eyeball like a million times easier. Uh. So if you wanna use pens and markers for small detailed areas like black eyeballs, do it. You don't have to though. I wanna give you the option. So I taught you the hard way and if you wanna do it the easy way another time, you have that information. I love my little Robin. Mm -hmm. Okay, what are you thinking in the terms of names, Keenan? What, what do you got for us? Harrison Wells. It is so perfect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> perfect. Harrison Wells. Sir, <laughs> it's been a pleasure and a joy to paint with, to paint you. Yeah. This was great. I hope you guys had fun with this project. I hope you, um, I hope this gives you a little bit more information about how you can add your own backgrounds to your paintings. Again, it doesn't have to be super detailed. It could just be a simple wash with some colors diffusing out and maybe a little bit of detail near where the animal is, but um, take this and run with this. Change the colors, do a different bird, maybe do a different uh, tree that it's on. Like, I want you guys 
to give yourself permission to make this your own. Um, if you are on Facebook, you can join our watercolor Facebook group. That's called Let's Make Art Watercolor. Wonderful place where you can learn from each other and share your work. It's large, so there are a lot of different people with um, different skill sets in there. And it can be intimidating because usually um, when we're more on the intermediate and professional level, we feel way more comfortable sharing our work. Beginners, it's a little bit trickier. Um, but I think that when we share every step of the process, we break down that myth that painting is something that you're born with or you're not. It's, that's just not true, at least for the vast majority of us. So share the beginning work, share the mess ups, share the frustrations and share what you're learning because that's all part of the process and we're here to support you. If you're on Instagram, you can tag us at let's go make art or hashtag let's make art or hashtag let's make art watercolor. And if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. Okay? Keenan, Sweet. thank you for naming Harrison Wells. You're welcome. That was the perfect name. Thank you. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.